Hello everyone, I'm Taya and I'm here to teach you a little bit about art history. Today's topic is one that's gotten me at least a million views on TikTok and have people constantly asking for more, providing different names of artists for me to research for them. Shameless plug, if you want to see all of the videos that I have on this topic on artists such as Eric Gill, Edgar Degas, Pablo Picasso and so many more, go follow me on TikTok. I have the name right here. But enough chatting. Let's look at two artists who were insanely famous throughout history, but had darker elements to their personal lives that have largely been ignored in favour for their contribution to the arts. And to start, none other than Pablo Picasso. Really, is there anywhere else I can begin? In my honest opinion, Pablo Picasso is one of the worst historical artists that we have praised so highly, and there are so many reasons for this. I do have an in-depth look into the things that this cubist artist has done in a different video and I will link it down in the description. But here is an overview of what has led this man to becoming the centre of the separation of art and artist debate in recent years. If I could describe Picasso in one word, it would be misogynist. Perhaps one of the most well-known artists of the 20th century and to this day, who amassed a fortune and following rare for living artists of the time, Picasso's lesson and lifestyle was cruelty towards and manipulation of the women in his life. One of his lovers remembered the revered artist stating that women were machines for suffering and that they were either goddesses or doormats. The fact that this quote came from a man known for his depiction of the female form in contorted and misshapen representations truly changes the way you view his works. This also leads me to wonder how much of this cubist idealization of women came from some profoundly troubling views. Another incident I really hate to recall, but I do feel like it's necessary when we're talking about this topic, is his use of a prepubescent girl as a nude model. And yes, you heard that right, a nude model. To somehow make this whole situation worse, it's really suspected that the young girl was actually adopted by Picasso and his lover Fernand Olivier in 1907, before being returned to the convent sometime after the sketches were complete. Okay, I want to specify that I'm not trying to claim that Picasso engaged in any kind of inappropriate behaviour with children. There is no evidence to suggest this, but the timeline is a little bit sketchy. Another artist that I fervently hate and will continue to discuss until more people understand his disgusting behaviour is Paul Gauguin. No matter how you feel about his bold works or his deep influence on artists such as Bernard or Matisse, you will quickly adopt a distaste for this man when you learn the intricacies of his life. And you can trust me when I tell you this because I've made a lot of people understand how disgusting this man is on my TikTok. It is well known that Gorgon spent a lot of his life in Tahiti, but what's lesser known is that this came after abandoning his wife and kids. To make the situation worse, he spent a lot of his time in Tahiti actually engaging in sexual relationships with underage girls. And he fathered children with at least three of these girls, each of which he abandoned later in life. Meredith Mendelssohn wrote that, while there are plenty of white male artists whose troubling lifestyles can be understood somewhat separately from their art, the difficulty with Gorgon is that his behaviour is laid bare on his canvases. His works really show a clear fascination with the young women of Tahiti, many showing sexual intent that is overwhelming and unnerving. The contributions that Gauguin made to art history are incredible, but that does not change the deplorable behaviour that he unashamedly depicted in his works that, until way too recently, were exhibited and praised around the world with no acknowledgement of their content or context. The debate of whether or not we should separate art and artists will never be fully concluded. I want to be clear, I don't believe in cancelling any artist, but I do strongly believe in understanding and acknowledging the full extent of an artist's life. This includes the good, the bad, and the ugly. These elements of an artist's life, as shown through Picasso and Gauguin, is so tangled in their work, it's almost impossible to untangle them. One relies on the other, and it's as simple as this. You cannot look at Picasso's weeping woman without acknowledging that this is the same woman that required psychiatric treatment after their relationship. These men have had tremendous impact on the trajectory of art history and contemporary art, but that's not an excuse to separate their wrongdoings from their art. In fact, I believe it's the opposite. 
We need to see the wrongdoings of those throughout history to truly and accurately understand what we're actually seeing. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and go check out my TikTok for more celebrated artists who are actually pretty terrible people.